of Gold. Say my mind, and you don't die. Kiev, as you receive, and your release is Satan. Today's thing is the fear of redemption. You may wonder why it is so crucial that you look upon your hatred and realize its full extent. You may also think that it would be easy enough for the Holy Spirit to show it to you and to dispel it without the need for you to raise it to awareness yourself. Yet, there is one more obstacle that you have interposed between yourself and the atonement. We have said that no one um, will countenance fear if he recognizes it. Yet, in your disordered state of mind, you are not afraid of fear. You do not like it, but it is not your desire to attack that really frightens you. You are not seriously disturbed by your hostility. You keep it hidden because you are more afraid of what it covers. You could look even upon the ego's darkest cornerstone without fear if you did not believe that without the ego you would find within yourself something you fear even more. You are not really afraid of crucifixion. Your real terror is of redemption. Under the ego's dark foundation is the memory of God and it is of this that you are really afraid. For this memory would instantly restore you to your proper place, and it is this place that you have sought to live. Your fear of attack is nothing compared to your fear of love. You would be willing to look even upon your savage will, your savage wish to kill God's son, if you did not believe that it saves you from love. You would be willing to look even upon your savage wish to kill God's son if you did not believe that it saves you from love. For this wish caused the separation and you have protected it because you do not want the separation healed. You realize that by removing the dark cloud that obscures it, your love for your father would impel you to answer his call and leap into heaven. You believe that attack is salvation because it would prevent you from this. For still deeper than the ego's foundation and much stronger than it will ever be is your intense, is your intense and burning love of God and His for you. This is what you are really, this is what you really want to hide. In honesty. Is it not harder for you to say I love than I hate? You associate love with weakness and hatred with strength. And your own real power seems to you as your real weakness. For you could not control your joyous response to the call of love if you hardened, And the whole world you thought, you thought you made, would vanish. The Holy Spirit then seems to be attacking your fortress, for you would shut out God and He does not will to be excluded. You have built your whole insane belief system because you think you would be helpless in God's presence and you would save yourself from His love because you think it would crush you into nothingness. You are afraid it would sweep you away from yourself and make you little because you believe that magnitude lies in defiance and that attack is gradier. You think you have made a world God would destroy and by loving him, which you do, you would throw this world away, which you would. Therefore, you have used the world to cover your love And the deeper you go into the blackness of the ego's foundation, the closer you come to the love that is hidden there. And it is this that frightens you. You can accept insanity because you made it, but you cannot accept love because you did not. You would rather be a slave of the crucifixion than a son of God in redemption. 
Your individual death seems more valuable than your living oneness, for what is given you is not so dear as what you made. You are more afraid of good than of the ego, and love cannot enter where it is not welcome. But hatred can, for it enters of its own volition and cares not for yours. You must look upon your illusions and not keep, not keep them hidden because they do not rest on their own foundation. In concealment, they appear to do so and thus they seem to be self-sustained. This is the fundamental illusion on which the others rest. For beneath them and concealed, as long as they are hidden, is the loving mind that thought it made them in anger. And the pain in this mind is so apparent when it is uncovered that its need of healing cannot be denied. Not all the tricks and games you offer it can heal it, for here is, here is the real crucifixion of God's son. And yet, he is not crucified. Here is both his pain and his healing, for the Holy Spirit's vision is merciful and his remedy quick. His remedy is quick. Do not hide suffering from his side, but bring it gladly to him. Lay before his eternal sanity all your head and let him heal you. Do not leave any spot of pain hidden from his light and set your mind carefully for any thoughts you may fear to uncover. For he will heal every little thought you have kept to hurt you and cleanse it of its littleness, restoring it to the magnitude of God. Beneath all the grandiosity you hold so dear is your real call for help. For you call for love to your father as your father calls you to himself. In that, in that place which you have hidden, you, you will only to unite with the father in loving remembrance of him. You will find this place of truth, of truth as you see it in your brothers, for though they may deceive themselves like you, they long for the grandeur that is in them. And perceiving it, you will welcome it, and it will be yours. For Gradier is the right of Gaussian, in no illusions, and no illusions can satisfy him or save him from what he is. Only his love is real, and he will be content only with his reality. Save him from his illusions that you may accept the magnitude of your Father in peace and joy. But accept no one from your love, or you will be hiding a dark place in your mind where the Holy Spirit is not welcome. And thus, you will accept yourself from His healing power, for by not offering total love, you will not be healed completely. Healing must be as complete as fear, for love cannot enter where there is one spot of fear to mar its welcome. You, who prefer separation to sanity, cannot obtain it in your, in your right mind. You were at peace until you asked for special favor. And God did not give it, for the request was alien to him, and you could not ask this of a father who truly loved his son. Therefore you made of him an unloving father, demanding of him what only such a father could give. And the peace of God's son was shattered, for he no longer understood his father. He feared what he had made, but still more did he fear his real father having attacked his own glorious equality with him. In peace, he needed nothing and asked for nothing. In war, Yet he demanded everything and he found nothing. For how could the gentleness of love respond to his demands except by departing in peace and returning to the Father? If the Son did not wish to remain in peace, he could not remain at all. 
for a darkened mind cannot live in the light, and it must seek a place of darkness where it can believe it is where it is not. God did not allow this to happen, yet you demanded that it happen, and therefore believed that it was so. To single out is to make alone, and thus make lonely. God did not do this to you. Could he set you apart knowing that your peace lies in his oneness? He denied you only your request for pain, for suffering is not of his creation. Having given you creation, he could not take it from you. He could but answer your insane request with the same answer that would abide with you in your insanity. For his answer is the reference point beyond illusions from which you can look back on them and see them as insane. But seek this place and you will find it, for love is in you and will lead you there. Think.